All right, welcome back to Fuck a Socks, the podcast, episode 160. Today on the show, new Big Titty Woodshop teacher just dropped. This time it's a Big Titty Public Defender, and RRB is losing his mind. Then, someone got shot over guac at Chipotle, and we tell you why empathy does not solve any problems in urban decay. Then, in Cringe of the Week, we have a heartbreaking story about a child who was taken from her mom and sold to homosexuals aka a surrogate and last but not least not only do progressives not know how to stereotype based on race they actually get everything dead backwards we're gonna cover that all this and more it's fuck us talks the podcast episode 160 ranked the best new podcast of all time because words are just words until action actually starts and actions speak louder than words, louder than but, words. but at the same time, words, words speak louder than actions because, because louder. sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. It's what the Stocks the Podcast featuring Richard Grab. All right, one for one on the intro. As always, guys, we have an abbreviated ad read today. Nothing crazy. We all saw the eclipse yesterday. It was very cool. I have available now on FleckusMerch.com Donald Trump 80s Synthwave Eclipse viewing shirts. I'm wearing it right now. Looks very cool. If you guys like this shirt and think it's cool, FleckusMerch.com is the website. Go get a shirt today. It supports the show and it's pretty cool and you can't get it anywhere else. All right, FleckusMerch.com is the website. It's linked in the description. Let's get into housekeeping. All right, thank you to Fleckus Merch for sponsoring. Thank you, Fleckus Merch. <laughs> thank you, Fleckus Merch. Very important to buy your Fleckus merch today. All right, we have a great show. I'm not just saying that. Yeah. We got four pages of housekeeping. We have a long, good uh, Urban Decay, strong, cringe, big titty woodshop teacher. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going (laughs) to. I have to get right to that, right? Yeah. For RRB's sake. It's a great show. You guys are going to love it. Uh, First things first, I want to cover some things really quick. Kind of a little uh, housekeeping speed round, if you will. All right. Number one. The other day I was walking outside and I walked into a spider web. Oh. And, you know, that's usually a nightmare situation for a lot of people. I stopped dead in my tracks. Spider web hit me in the forehead, stopped dead in my tracks and backed up out of it. And it came off my face. Wow. And I got out of it. New technique. Very good. Yeah. Highly advanced technique. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You have to to stop dead in your tracks. Mm -hmm. As soon as you feel it, you can't. You have to just. And I backed up. And the problem was I was texting my friends that you're in a group chat that you're in. Uh And while I was texting in the group chat, I walked into a different spider web. Wow. Bummer. So there's a lesson to be learned there. Don't count all the unhatched eggs before you put them into one basket or whatever. Yeah. two Or one spider web is another follows some sort of idiom. Yeah. There might be. Or you got to de spider web the backyard before you're walking around with no shirt on. Smart. Stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Number two, Caitlin Clark and women's basketball. I watched two women's basketball games over the weekend, the final four for NCAA women's. Yeah. And it was actually really good. Yeah. They shoot lights out. It was impressive. They were making baskets. They, they, were, they were running and passing and scoring. They barely missed any layups. Like, it was actually a real game. Yeah. What did you think happened? Just bricks and, like, slow and yeah. uh, layups? People were – the stadium was, like, full of people. Yeah. It was so, it was electric, I would say. Completely blew my mind, and it's good to know because that was actually, like, a real basketball game almost. Yeah. I think we hit Caitlin Clark mania, so I think she had something to do with it. Um, and, well, you know, a few trans guys will ruin it soon. Yeah. So don't worry about that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> this is the last year. <laughs> this is the try. last pure year. All right, and then the last thing in this quick speed round uh, in housekeeping, Shetland Pony Racing. Yeah. Um, you see this? Yeah, I'm the, seeing it. The little people on the little horses. I know. It's crazy. No one thought to tell me about this? I Look, know. <laughs> looking at you horse people. There's a lot of horse people that follow me. You didn't think this is something I'd like to see? That's very disrespectful. So, it's not alert Fleckus of a mini horse race. Yeah, no need to send this to Fleckus. He probably doesn't care. So horse people, you are on a watch list. I don't know how this exists, and I didn't find out until now. Yeah. All right. uh, Moving on. The eclipse happened. It's kind of happening. It happened a couple hours ago. Uh, We don't fully know what's going to happen or what the repercussions are. We have to assume California has fallen into the ocean. Yeah. Well, California is lost. White House (laughs) down. Gerard Butler is like (laughs) ushering someone into an SUV right now, I think. Lone survivor. Uh, designated survivor as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, designated survivor. So there's one congressman who's going to be in charge of all of this. I don't know. Jack man. Reacher's on it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what <laughs> happens. 
Uh, and I think a lot of people got cloud cucked. Yeah. A lot. I've seen a lot of pictures of people who just go, there's the eclipse. It's pure cloud cover. So we saw it. We saw it. We had a neighbor come over with the glasses. Which was very good because we were not, I was just planning on going like this and kind of looking at it. Yeah. However, I was going to do a glance at it just out the side, but uh, he came and saved it yeah. and we fully saw it. You really can't mm -hmm. just look at it. I thought you could. You can't. Yeah. You I tried. Can't. You can't. Floaters now. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Speaking of the earth ending, last week, New York City uh, announced Trans Day of Visibility on yeah. Easter. Uh, and then they lit up the skyline with trans colors and LGBT shit. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, there's an earthquake and the lightning strikes uh, the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. What do you think? That's just God saying, mm, not supposed to do that. Not so fast, NYC. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's yeah, fair. It's just nice and easy. For sure. No big deal. I just wanted to make sure we have that on the record. Yeah. All right. We're moving on to page two of housekeeping. Make sure you guys use this opportunity to tickle the post. Help us juice the algo. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Leave a comment again. Notifications. And send stuff to the P.O. Box. If you want to. Only if you want to. We haven't gone to the P.O. Box lately. so Two weeks, I think. It's probably They're going to get mad again. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get into some Joe Biden stuff. Okay. Uh, Joe Biden, um, they did an ad going against Trump, talking about the cash on hand they have versus Trump. They have $192 million. Trump only has $93 million. And this tweet really summed up. Uh, yeah, ca cash on hand, one ninety two versus ninety three, and they're kind of it's kind of a meme slash shit talking Trump. Uh, and they list a bunch of positive things, and then they kind of meme Trump and say Trump spent on legal fees, offices, fake golf trophies. Like, yeah, you guys are like throwing cases at him from every corrupt district attorney in the country yeah. and trying to bankrupt a guy through lawsuits. Yeah. So they're openly bragging about it. Orrin McIntyre said our political opponent has less money because we weaponize the legal system is an interesting way to restore faith in democracy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's pretty much it right there. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Joe Biden. And, and Trump just had like a $50 million fundraiser or something. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, the shit talk. talk all, you were talking all that shit just a second ago, Joe Biden. But the hedge see. fund boys came to Mar-a-Lago and they wrote checks. Yeah. That's yeah. good to see. Uh, and then Joe Biden's uh, trying to improve his standing with the black community. Yeah, he's putting on hold a menthol ban amid 2024 concerns over black support. So he was going to ban menthols, and now Menthol Joe is saying, hold up, <laughs> wait a minute. We got to let them smoke, right? Yeah, I know what they like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they'll, they'll, yeah. they, they'll vote based on this. You ain't black if you ban men Newports, you know? So, yeah, so it might work. Yeah. Um, and then someone met Joe Biden a couple days ago, and this is what they did. Interesting move. Okay, thank you. Please, please tell me I'm your national anthem. Red, white, blue is in the sky. Summer's in the air, and baby, heaven's in your eyes. I'm your national anthem. Wait, can you tell me what that is? That was a good move. Lana Del Rey song, yeah, the national anthem. That's iconic because, you know, Joe Biden, all he knows is the moment he's in right now. 100%. So if you met him and were like, hey, Mr. President, my nephew runs a nonprofit that takes illegals and gives them abortions, he'll go, oh, and then like that'll be it. He's not. He can't remember anything. Exactly. He's not about to act on that and be like, call my office tomorrow. We'll set something up. Like, there's none of that. Yeah, none of that. That would be a waste of time. Your best bet. He knows, sings a song. He knows, he knows words are happening and a performance is happening. And he can kind of like, and you give him something to enjoy. It's like a time off for his brain where, oh, I know singing the song. Yeah. So that twink singing Lana Del Rey was actually the smartest move he could have done because you can't get anything productive out of Joe. You might as well cause a scene and like get the social media clout, right? Yeah. And have him just enjoy the moment he's in as an old man. Yeah. In his <laughs> final years. So uh, you, you'd think we'd be against that. Fair play. Very fair play. <laughs> Um, all right, let's move on. Speaking of Joe Biden uh, and Ben Shapiro. No, oh, just shoehorning <laughs> Ben Shapiro in there. Well, uh, Biden's stupidity, let's, let's Biden's say. Biden's stupidity, right? Joe yeah. Biden's so stupid. Everyone knows that, but there's more to it. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Shapiro had a long tweet. You can kind of maybe read it than just the rest of it. Joe Biden will cause World War III through his utter and complete stupidity. His current position is the United States is willing to go to direct war with nuclear power by admitting Ukraine to NATO, the blah, blah, blah. He just gives a list of why Joe Biden's so stupid and how that's going to lead us to World War III, right? Yeah, exactly. And this is what makes me think that Ben Shapiro might not fully be on our side. Mm. 
It's like oh, you, this. <laughs> uh, it's like if you're looking at what's going on in the country and you think like, oh, damn, the country's falling apart because Joe Biden's so stupid and he's trying his best. But because he's so dumb, he can't get anything done right. Is Joe Biden not seeing what's happening at the southern border? Is he yeah. too stupid? Is he not paying attention? And it's like, yeah. And what's actually going on is the people that control Joe Biden are executing a very well thought out plan to purposely destroy the country. And it's going great. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually working. <laughs> it's like the days of assuming good motives are like a decade away. Yeah. Like 10 years ago, maybe you could, but you still shouldn't have. Uh, but to see this and go, oh, Joe Biden's so dumb. The country's falling apart. Joe Biden's in on it. Yeah. Stupidity versus malevolence, right? Yeah. You, you can't really assume stupidity or ignorance anymore. It's uh, a complete invasion and, you know, borderline brinksmanship on World War Three shit. Joe Biden's got a State Department that they, they they're running an op. They're running something. Yeah, so it's exactly. Not, it's not like Joe Biden's stupid and goes, yeah, send it in, sign it. Yeah, Joe Biden's a dope. Yeah, he brought in fifty million illegals by accident. Yeah, they're gonna vote soon. He's so stupid. <laughs> he's so stupid. They're gonna vote for him, and then they're gonna he's gonna ruin the whole integrity of our election process again. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole point. This is a very well executed plan from the very top people in the world and their goal is to destroy America and Joe Biden's the Muppet that whose hands in his butt going like this and it's not even good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they not- don't even have to Muppet him that hard. He'll, he'll do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Third and second to last page of housekeeping. Um, we found this funny exercise that was done, I think at a company. Yeah. Um, and it's basically like, it's like HR training. It's cultural competence training, mental models, and worldviews. And it looks like Oasis with two A's is whoever did it, improving yep. lives. I don't know much about them. but So there's like a, a thing that they do. It's a test. It's an exercise. And you're supposed to answer it in a certain way. And if you answer it in a certain way, you're a good boy. And if you answer it in a different way, you're a bad boy. Can you read it and then read the options? Yeah. The 12 persons listed below have been selected as passengers on a spaceship for a flight to another planet because tomorrow the planet Earth is doomed for destruction. Due to changes in space limitations, it has now been determined that only eight persons may go. Any eight qualify. Your task is to select the eight passengers who will make the ship, uh, who will make the trip. And this is, I think, 12 total. Mm -hmm. You want me to read them out? Yeah, yeah, read them out. An accountant with a substance abuse problem, a militant African-American medical student, a 33-year-old female Native American manager who does not speak English, the accountant's pregnant wife, a famous novelist with a physical disability, a 21-year-old female Muslim international student, a Hispanic clergyman who is against homosexuality, a female movie star who was recently the victim of sexual assault, a racist armed police officer who has been accused of using excessive force, a gay male professional athlete, vegetarian, an Asian orphaned 12-year-old boy, a 60-year-old Jewish uh, university administrator. Yeah, so this is an easy one. Eight, only, eight, eight only, racist cops? <laughs> yeah. Give me eight racist cops? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can duplicate them, right? There's only eight spots. Uh, we can lose the uh, Native American who speak English, the gay guy, the Jewish guy, the black guy, the handicapped Muslim. <laughs> They're all gone. Dump them. Uh, the the, the accountant and his wife first on the boat. They can get on. Uh, She's pregnant. The Asian orphan. We can probably we can probably put him to work. Oh yeah, he can get and, and he'll grow up. You know, he'll be like a, a male. He can get someone pregnant later. Yep, yep. And then the substance abuse problem. Accountant. That's cool with me. No, no Hopefully worries. he has a fun substance. You'll detox on the trip, I assume. Yeah, or bring some fun substances with you. Oh yeah, party. Depends what you're into. Uh, and then, yeah, the racist cop. Yeah, give me, give me a couple and a of Hispanic, him. the Hispanic homophobic clergyman. That's <laughs> it. And we got four extra seats. We're only bringing four. Everyone gets an empty seat next to them, which is the right way to travel. Absolutely. <laughs> we need armrests. They need coat, coat seats. It's called. It's called having a seat for your coat. Gotta save humanity. It's like whoa. I got a coat seat next yeah. to me, and I like to. I open. can put my bag there. <laughs> my iPads rests on that. Yeah, and then the, uh, the on the bottom it mm-hmm. said like what the point of this exercise was. Yeah, uh, it was like circled in the in the red there. Yeah, I already read that. It's Cultural a, competence training, mental models, and worldviews. Yeah, so mental models and worldviews, uh-huh. and it's like I, the West, the White West, uh-huh. 
is like doing this thing now. It's been going on for years, obviously. It's been the, the agenda. But they, the White West needs to be globally aware. Mm-hmm. When back in the day, like everyone was allowed to be themselves and exist in their own cultures, and you can travel the world and see different cultures and see what it's like. Yeah, you get them a la carte. You go to Ireland, you get an Irish experience. Yep. Now it's like some migrant is your taxi driver, and then another migrant works at the hotel front desk, and they go, do you have any recommendations for where to go in Dublin? And they go, no. <laughs> <laughs> They don't know it. Yeah, exactly. So, but now the the White West is expected to be like globally aware of other cultures to the point where you don't even have your own. Your culture becomes a mix of the world's culture, mm-hmm. and it kind of reminds me of like when I was a kid. You take like all the different colors in the paint set, yeah, and you mix them up, thinking you're going to make some cool color, but it ends up being poopy brown, poop shit brown. Yeah, so um, we've all done that, right? We've all done that. So yeah. it just makes me think America who's trying to be so globally conscious and culturally aware, instead of preserving your own culture, you're going to mix it all up with the whole world's culture, and we're going to get some poopy brown thing. Yeah, and then friendly reminder that white people are only 8% of the global population, and like there's only, I don't know, 30 million redheads in yeah. the world. It's like... Let's juice those numbers, right? Yeah, that's a good point. So so if you get – these tests are going to be, like, more and more popular. You're going to see them in schools, in the government, in education, like, at all levels, corporations. I had one of these at my corporate job. Can I tell a quick story? Yeah, of course. It was just, like, the dumbest shit ever. They'd show you a black guy who was disheveled, and then you'd say, like, okay, what do you think about him? And then they just tell you, he's actually a doctor. <laughs> and then there's a white person who looks professional, and they go – yeah, he's actually a janitor with a high school education. He's so a con man. you're biased, you know, because we made up the thing. Yeah, so. exactly. So if you get a good score on these tests, you're a good boy and you'll get rewarded and promoted. And if you get a bad boy score on one of these tests, you'll be going to the camps if Trump doesn't win in 2024. Yeah. And if you're uh, at uh, work or doing some sort of corporate HR training, you always give the good boy answers and then make fun of them with your friends afterwards, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just so we're all on the same page. Send, go, them, send them into the podcast. Yeah, you go through the motions, then you send them into the podcast. All right, moving on. Speaking of ruining the country, mm-hmm. uh, we have a little bit of a migrant section. Nothing crazy. Yeah. Just, it's actually a small migrant update, but the tuberculosis cases are on the rise. Chicago health officials confirming a, quote, small number of tuber- tuberculosis cases in migrant shelters across the city. But they're not saying how many. This comes after 56 known measles cases are reported in the Windy City. Chicago Alderman Raymond Lopez has warned about this issue for months, and he joins us now. So, Raymond... Damn, half more than half the cases are in Chicago. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's ground zero, right, for the old 1800s-ass diseases, measles and tuberculosis. That's exciting. You may have thought you were done with those, but no, you're not. They're coming back in a big way. That's and life in the big city. That's Chicago, baby. And then there was a stat. The Windy City. Bloody <laughs> 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 <Like, laughs> TV. It's a migrant. Um, so there was a stat that came out about all the people being flown into the country illegally. Yeah. Uh, it said, it says payback 90% of illegal immigrants and secret program flown to Florida and Texas. Yeah. So that's the federal government taking revenge on the bus charters, you know, Mm. from Texas, Texas, mainly Florida didn't do much, but, uh, yeah. So it's whether you like it or not, even if you have a red state governor or not. The federal government is looking to kick you in the proverbial nuts. Yeah. And then there is like a aspect here where, you know, they need to fill their swing counties. They need to obviously Texas is purplish right now. So they want to make it blue. How do you do it? You fly everyone into the exact places you need. You fly them into Texas. We didn't even need to. They cross in Texas. Mm. And actually, that's something that's changing a little bit now because Governor Abbott, I think uh, Joe Biden, like, you know how the barbed wire defiance fight happened Mm -hmm. and the Biden administration still hasn't done any barbed wire cutting because the optics would be insanely bad in an election year. You know, we're six months out from the election now. Um, And I think more I saw Bill Malugan talking about this. More and more illegals are just crossing in Arizona now, in California. So uh, you guys, we've always said it. They're smart. They watch social media. The NGOs are helping them, and they adapt. So uh, there's always a weak spot in America whether or not one governor stands tall or not, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, There is a new psychedelic drug from the bones of dead people that's making people act like zombies. Yeah, psychoactive drug made from human bones that has... Seen addicts digging up graves to get high leads to Sierra Leone declaring a national emergency as zombie narcotics sweeps through West Africa, killing a dozens a month. Wow. Let's we gotta get these guys free houses in Milwaukee. Yeah, they should they should come to Pensacola. 
<laughs> I like just naming random cities. <laughs> we need to get these guys to America. You know where these guys would adapt well? Cincinnati. Yeah. And the suburbs of Cincinnati, not even just the city <laughs> itself. So we'll get a whole school of them. Yeah. Um, let's go to our last piece of our migrant section. The great replacement theory is becoming less and less of a theory by the day, as everyone knows. Yeah, it's that. What do you call it when it's upgrades from a theory? The great replacement law, like in science, yeah. you go from theory to law. So it's not so even. Th yeah, they'll just scratch the word theory off. Like yeah. right now, it's the right wing going. It's a great replacement theory. Like they're trying to replace us. And then once they do, and we're less loud about it because we got replaced, yeah. then they'll just go, it's the great replacement. And then yeah. they'll just take over the narrative of it. <laughs> All of a sudden, one day there will be a Wikipedia article saying the great replacement started in 1990. And <laughs> the goal to end white racism and white supremacy. And yeah. it worked. So uh, this is foreign born population growth under Obama, Trump and Joe Biden. Obama was 68,000 per month, Trump 42,000 per month and Joe Biden 172,000 per month. Wow. Straight chart up. And, uh, you know, our birth rates aren't going any higher when you're struggling to pay your bills and groceries are $400 now. So when you live in the city and you have no money, you can't have kids. You don't really think to have kids. Yeah. But the illegals come here and they barely have anything. They get a free house and some a monthly check for 700 bucks and they go, oh, I I'll can have three kids <laughs> I now. I can have a kid. I never had this much money in my life. <laughs> Um, I found a video that if you guys aren't good at graphs, this kind of depicts what's going on. Uh, it's playing here in the background. Uh, it's a bird returning to his nest, the place that he lived and grew up in. Mm -hmm. And um, it gets destroyed. So the hose people, that's globalism. Mm -hmm. That's the globalists. And then we're, we're here. We're the bird returning to what was once our home, seeing it's gone, dropping the sticks from our mouth. And crying to the sky. Yeah. That's us. Nice. Nice See, allegory. It's a metaphor. Yeah, a yeah metaphor. something. I don't know. <laughs> something. <laughs> All right. We're out of our migrant section. We're moving on. We're finishing. Are we going to do the Somali? No. Okay. Somali in Sweden. Ki honor killed his girlfriend, pregnant girlfriend. Cultures don't fit there. There you I go. summed it up. We did do it. Yeah. There you go. Um, last piece of housekeeping. A giant skeletons found in Nevada. Yeah, so this- 10 feet tall. Scientists still baffled from giant human skeletons up to 10 feet tall decades after initial discovery. No, you think that's nothing, I'm assuming. I don't know. No, I'm- You don't I, believe I, I gotta read the article. I gotta- I, I believe in some prehistoric giant shit, but you know. And then just for reference, I found a girl um, in the news that's six foot 10. I'm six foot 10 and I have the world's longest legs. Here's how I date and shop for clothes. But you see how gigantic she is? Yeah, she could be She could be in there. But the giants are three feet taller than her. I know. So that's like giant, giant. Yeah, wasn't there some time where all the oxygen in the atmosphere was super, made bugs like the size of this big? Mm, are they from that? No, because remember, humans used to be small. I remember that. They started getting bigger once they uh, started eating like pigs and cows and chickens and shit. Yeah, okay. So they got but bigger. There was an era when everything was huge, though. Yeah, it's not from there. <laughs> I don't think you know much about it. <laughs> yeah. I think you just want to challenge me and say, see, scientists said, see, 10 foot tall guy. Giants are real. Why don't you do your research? I'll do mine. We'll circle back to this. Maybe come back in bonus Maybe land. Maybe come fight back it in out. bonus land. So, yeah. But, you know, I think most people know. They're the descendants of when the Watchers mated with the humans on Earth. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right. Last piece of uh, – second to last piece of housekeeping. There is a new theory, a conspiracy theory going around that uh, Future, the rapper, is actually just Meryl Streep in blackface. Future is a white woman, and it shows them side by side. Ooh, there's a mirror image. Yep. There's them next to each other. Glasses. Ooh, both with glasses. Wow, that's damning. This is pretty compelling stuff. <laughs> I had no idea. This might not be true. Oh, okay, okay. But, you know. Grain of salt, pinch of salt with that. We thought the giants weren't true either until a few minutes ago. Until scientists were baffled, yeah. All right, last part of housekeeping, uh, bowling ball through a car window. Let's see. People wonder, people ask me all the time, Fleck, is bowling ball through a car window? Does it work? Does it not work? Here's your answer. A lot of people want to know if a bowling ball will go through the side window of a van. We're going to see right now, okay? Side windows are so strong, though. They, a bowling ball could get through that. Maybe it'll hit and stop. Probably. Yeah. Maybe it'll get ejected. Nope. Straight through. So there you go. Yeah, it goes right through. No problem. <laughs> 
Now everyone knows. So if you're a uh, bad high school kid, yeah, oh. you're hanging out at an overpass, and you you're throwing the, turkeys or whatever. You got the keys to the castle now. Yeah. Actually, people die from that. Yeah, so that's not funny. You should really never do that. Never do that. Okay. Out of <laughs> housekeeping and moving on to cringe of the week. All right, our first clip of Cringe of the Week, the big titty public defender. I'm sorry we didn't get to this sooner, Richard. It sucks, man. It it comes out like right after we're done, or Friday, right after we release the podcast, and it's like, could have been any worse timing. But uh, here she is, beautiful, Stephanie Mueller. Mm -hmm. Um, And let's let's just play this video from the start. Yep. Okay, let me check on that. Yeah, yeah. So we were talking A6, A4. There she is. All right. Do I need to sign anything? No. Nope. It's really nice. She's really smart. She sounds like she's got the right idea about things. I really support what she's up to, and I think it's fabulous. How about that? God, it, do you, she's accused of, what is it, criminal trespass? In the first degree. Yes. Is she innocent or guilty? She's innocent, of course. She's innocent. So that's okay. interesting. So it sounds like the public defender is okay with trespassing and trying to get people off for trespassing in Seattle. Yeah. She, uh, <laughs> she this beautiful, big-breasted <laughs> public defender, loves her client. And, you know, um, the funny thing is this guy, I think his name is Jonathan Cho, and he was covering – it's like an Antifa girl who had done some bad things, and he was covering it for Turning Point. And then he goes, wait, who's that? And it's the big titty <laughs> fucking public defender. And it's like, okay, I don't care about this case anymore. Let's focus on this freak. Yeah, it makes you want to go to Seattle and commit a crime and not be able to afford attorney and have one uh, afforded for you, whatever yeah, they say. assigned to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I might go a little arson, a little arson over let's in see, Seattle. Let's see who I get assigned Roll to. Roll the dice. And then, you know, eventually you have to commit a number of felonies. You have to keep committing felonies until you get assigned to the big titty public defender. Mm-hmm. But um, – <laughs> So here's the thing, a couple of things, since I'm a big titty public defender expert, right? This is the exact same as the silicone, as the big titty woodshop teacher. This is a silicone chest plate, possibly Z cup. And I'm going to tell you guys how to spot that. Obviously the freakishly large breasts. Anytime you see the freakishly large breast, she's either a freak, uh, fake tits, or it's the prosthetic, right? Permanent hard nips too. Permanent hard nips. That's right. You beat me to it. Permanent hard nips, very leading indicator of that. Then you see Stephanie here, Stephanie Mueller, God bless, um, has the neck thing, the little neck thing. And that is to hide where the prosthesis the seam. ends. So there's a seam on the neck. I, as you can see, the this is a screenshot from Amazon where you can purchase this for, I think, as low as $350. So the barriers to entry are, they're kind of hard. Yeah, exactly. But so anytime the neck is covered, that's when you know it's one of these prosthetics. Um, So this absolute freak clown uh, porn addict? Yeah. Something happened. My theory is something happened to this man um, where someone who looks exactly like this, either his ex-wife or his father's ex-wife or his you know mother's someone from stepmom, when he was in kindergarten or something teacher when he was a kid yeah. something happened to this guy unfortunately uh by, by someone who looks like this and it wired his brain wrong and told him to grow into that yeah um and then so we know it's a chest plate we know it's the same thing as the big titty woodshop teacher the other funny thing deepest manliest voice i've ever heard in my life it doesn't even try like a 10 two two packs a day smoker type voice the clowniest makeup you've ever seen. And then the Seattle judge goes, yeah, a- approach the bench. Nobody does anything. Wouldn't you just, if you were the judge, go, all right, before we get started, what's going on here? You, you need to go change. <laughs> what's going on with this? Person? I have an oversized sweatshirt in the back you can wear for today. But if I see you in my courtroom again like this, you will be disbarred. Or something, <laughs> like I will be reporting you to the bar. Um, and then someone else, I think Hanania or Richard Hanania or somebody said, at some point, you just got to watch them like like a progressive city like this, like they're animals in a zoo. You can't expect to be like, do, do the right thing, Seattle. You just got to appreciate the freaks they give you and laugh at it. And right? never go to Seattle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stay away from Seattle. So um, I don't know. The chest plate, I saw it. I spotted it from a mile away. Everybody knows that, right? I don't think it's that hard. The permanently hard nips, they don't have soft nip uh, fetish shit. They don't sell that. So She's just a sex pot. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie. Permanent sex pot, Stephanie. Yeah. 
All right, um, I think that's yeah. it. That's yeah, I, that was pretty good. Points. That yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. Rap Boy's been spiraling about this. Yeah, I've been pacing around the room, new person to obsess over. And it's just in time, to be honest, because the Big Titty Woodshop teacher has mostly uh, disappeared from public life. Yeah, you needed a new one. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then uh, obviously when a person like this is a public defender lawyer who's doing things like in public and like a normal person. Not even in public, like on the record. Yeah. You know, that's it's everything you do in court is on the record, recorded, important. Crazy. Someone's life is on the line, you know, yeah. jail time. Yeah, that's actually insane. So when you have that, you kind of like mainstream the trans shit. Uh-huh. And then with that, it obviously sets an example for kids that like, oh, this is a path. You can grow up and be a, a, a trans lawyer with the breastplate. $350 on Amazon and an extra 50 for a, a makeup palette. And I'm on my way. I don't even have to change my voice. Exactly. And in the same way that Stephanie Mueller had something happen where they got wired incorrectly and mm -hmm. became this abomination, yeah. that could actually now get passed on to kids because- that person can influence a young child whose first memory or core memory becomes this, and then they think, oh, I want to grow up to become that. It's a chain. It's and a it's chain. not good because we just found out, well, we knew this already, but a, a recent stat came out that kids outgrow being trans. Mm. Most gender-confused children grow out of it. Landmark 15-year study concludes, as critics say, it shows being trans is usually just a phase for kids. Yeah, exactly. So you grow it out, and that's like the thing that people don't want to see. Because if you did show people that, then you'd have the realization that like, hey, we don't need to do anything permanent. We don't need to give anyone hormones. We don't need to get anyone's surgery, cut anything off, or add a summer sausage to anybody. Yeah, we really shouldn't because everybody grows out of it and their soft brains change and now they're on to anime or something. Exactly. So if your kid is like going down the trans road, it's like, oh, okay, you dress like a tomboy or whatever. But now, obviously, no one needs to act on anything because all these kids are going to grow out of it. Yeah. Speaking of kids growing out of it, um, Brown University, yeah. there's a bunch of kids there that haven't grown out of it yet. Report, 40% of Brown University students identify as LGBTQQIAAP2S+. Is that right. new? Did this, this, new? Are they adding shit? I know what the P stands for. I think, <laughs> I think sometimes they add shit just to see if you're on your toes. QQ. QQ. What's the other one? I don't know. How many Q words are there even? Um, and then there's a kid on the track team, a, a girl's track team, who also hasn't grown out of it yet, but yeah. they grew. They, oh. <laughs> yeah, they grew. They had a growth spurt. Freak the mighty. She's 6'4". Yeah, this girl's track and field team at Saybrook High School in Connecticut. I bet you can't tell which one is male, said Libs of TikTok. And, oh, there she is. I wonder who broke the shot put record this year. Yeah. Which well, girl broke the shot put record? And that's the best part. It's like this whole team and they all have medals. And then I'm sure like the state record is just so in grasp. <laughs> Two X did. Yeah. Oh, I beat it by 20, 20 feet. Oh, man. All right. And then let's go to a um, there's a trans person who looks like a guy. It's a girl who became a guy. Uh, yep. This picture right here. Mm -hmm. There and then, is. And then Leo. People, <laughs> people are saying like as if it's a gotcha, like, oh, Republicans think that this person should go in the women's room. They said transphobia will always be insane to me because what do you mean you believe that's a woman? And it's like the guy's got the beard, the little hairy arms. He's probably five foot three. Yeah. Big eyes. And he looks, yeah, he looks like a little boy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's like people make the argument, think it's a gotcha. Oh, you're saying that this person should go in the women's room? And it's like, well, here we are again, trans people making women uncomfortable in the bathroom. Yeah. The bathroom, <laughs> you, you, you steroided yourself out of your own bathroom. Yeah. And then my, th my stance on that is uh, a man who thinks they're a woman mm -hmm. should use the men's room. Mm -hmm. A woman who thinks they're a man should use the men's room. Okay. Like this person, I think should go to the men's room because we don't, I don't want women to have to deal with this at all. Yeah, that's true. I actually agree with that. And then it's all about like women getting sexually assaulted or getting pictures taken of them. The horny perverted male brain with no governor is the main concern for yeah. all of this trans shit. I don't mind what the little girls worry themselves with. Yeah, you're a man. You're a little boy. Go sit down when you pee. He's, you still can't use a urinal. You're in a stall by yourself anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, I, and you can't beat up anybody. You're five mm -hmm. four. All right, yeah, go go LARP. How long do you think it takes this uh, little girl to pick out an outfit for her man? She got to look more. I got to look masculine. She, she lays today. out two or three outfits and goes, what do I do? I, what's going to be the manliest? White beater and then the jeans with the belt. Um, yeah, so really funny shit. But and that's my current stance. It's just 
no matter what, it's out about of the protect, wo- yeah, protecting out of the women. Room. Yeah, protect because protect men and women. women aren't the same, and women need to be looked out for a little more. And men are built different. Don't go in the ladies' room if you're trans. Yeah, that's it. All right, moving on. Uh, I found this tweet of a person, or it was uh, it was on Reddit. Yeah, of a person who had rib cage damage from all the binding, the chest binding yeah. they do. Speaking of little girls trying to be little boys, uh, yeah. they, they just posted rib cage damage from binding, and look at this like indent. So bad. Yeah. No. 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 Wrapping and trying to like morph your body into something caused permanent damage on something else. Yeah. And then you grow out of it and you're going to go, well, now my rib cage is all fucked up because when I was 13, you let me do this. Yeah. My lungs get 65% of the air that they should because I fucked up my rib cage trying to be a boy for three years in high school. Uh, that's so true. Isn't that so sad? That's the opposite of big titty public defender. Yeah. That's the inverse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's got a little girl voice. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, we were talking about the bathrooms before, the trans bathroom situation. Speaking of... Planet Fitness is being exposed for hosting uh, gay sex porn parties in their bathrooms. Kind of. But you might not. You might be surprised at our stance on this. Basically, uh, Libs of TikTok has been going on a crusade with Planet Fitness, which uh, Planet Fitness has in their rules that you go to whatever bathroom you feel comfortable in. That's, you know, people were canceling their memberships. Fleckus made some promises, I believe, and he's been delivering. I got smoked on yeah. that one. I told uh, you not to. I, 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 yeah. So, um, and that was just Venmoing people. I, that's bad. <laughs> so, it's bad. Uh, I got smoked. But yeah, we have more bonus landers now. But yeah. And point is, um, Planet Fitness made that into law. And then now Libs of TikTok has been going on a crusade like, wow, I just discovered there's an entire subreddit dedicated to people posting nude sexual photos while at Planet Fitness. Time to post a new picture. Tan time, something in uh, Baldwin, Missouri. Like people are just posting from all over. Uh, and is it a lot of gay stuff too? It's is a that- lot of gay stuff. Yeah. And so, what's your take on that? Here's what I'm going to say: the gay guys they post like the, their butt and shit, and mm-hmm. they hook up in the bathroom and they video it. And Libs at TikTok discovered that and was thinking it's a gotcha for Planet Fitness. It's just a gotcha for gay guys. Gay guys are just so horny. There's no governor. They're constantly, they could do this at LA Fitness. LA they could do Fitness, it. Planet Fitness, Anytime Fitness, Crunch Gym. If you YMCA, Google all of it, Equinox. Yeah. <laughs> they, that's what gay guys are up to at the gym. Gay guys are doing a lot of disgusting shit. And this has nothing to do with Planet Fitness, like the rules of Planet Fitness, right? Yeah. It's it's not like, please pay, take a picture of your dick when you come in and shower. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just gay guys doing uh, deviant what they, shit. It's what they do. Yeah. It's gay guys doing what they do. At Planet Fitness, like they do at Crunch Fitness, and, and not, Anytime, and LA Fitness. And not only gay guys. I'm sure there's some OnlyFans girls who get off on yeah, the public shit. Yeah, and, yeah. So, but, you know, that's not part of their policy, right? So, uh, yeah. And I just thought it'd be funny to not take the obvious side of, oh, this is horrible. It is. It's yeah. gross. It's <laughs> yeah, bad. It's of degenerate. Course. Of course. But it's just, that's like, you're, it's, you, it's more of a gay guy thing than a Planet Fitness corporate, policy problem. Corporate <laughs> policy directive. Yeah. <laughs> it's the gay guys. Yeah. They, 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 they go crazy and they do whatever they want and they can't help themselves. Yeah. You saw what they'll do in a, in a courtroom in Seattle. <laughs> what do you think they'll do when no one's looking in a locker room in Planet Fitness, right? With another gay guy. Yeah. Um, all right, we're still in cringe. Let's move on to the egg donor sad video. This was really sad. Yeah. So to, what's the word, preface? Yeah. Uh, this is a mom who was an egg donor and surrogate for two homosexuals. Two homosexual men, yes. And then every year for like the baby's birthday, the mom sends a video and the baby sends one back. And this is a couple clips from that. I want to wish you a happy birthday, and so does Malik. He says happy birthday also. I hope you had a wonderful fourth birthday. I really love looking at all your pictures on Instagram, and you're growing up to be such a beautiful and creative sparkling light. And I know your daddies love you so much. So happy birthday, baby girl, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you, Mommy. What did you say? Okay, so you can say that to her. What do you want to say? I love you, Mommy. Thank you. Mm. Isn't that sad? I love you, Mommy. And then all you get is a self-recorded video once a year from your mom, and you send one back. Not even a FaceTime live. And the gay guy squeals in the background that you can say that. You have a deep, primal urge. I love you, Mommy. I reach out to you, Mommy. 
Yeah. And you look like her a little bit at least. You know, yeah. you're at least half genetically, right? And then, but your mom sold you to homosexuals. Did, hey, yeah. boss, didn't Dave Rubin and his gay boyfriend do that? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> they did. Um, and that's pretty dark, too. And I'm sure that kid will be calling out for mommy sometime soon. So very sad. A lone tear stream, uh, streams down my face for that. And it's not cheap. What is it? 250? 300? To do it right? Yeah. Yeah, 300K if you want to pick, you know, have your pick of the surrogate. So uh, it's one of those messed up situations where someone does it if they're not in the greatest place in life, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then this is from Allie Beth Stuckey who is, goes hard on this issue, which we respect, obviously, because we're in the same boat. This is not the first time I've heard from a nanny, babysitter, nurse, et cetera, who cared for a child born via egg selling slash surrogacy who is inconsolably sad about having no mommy. Kids know. They always know. And it says, Allie, years ago while in grad school, I took a job babysitting for a gay couple who had adopted little girl, who had adopted a little girl, two men. It was the saddest experience. I still think about it. I quit after only four weeks because my heart couldn't take it. The little girl had no mother figure but clung to me, called me mommy, asked me where her mommy was, carried around baby doll, a baby doll she pretended to be the mommy of. This sweet three-year-old little girl had so many questions and needs only a mother could provide her with, and it broke my heart. I'm not proud of it, but I had to quit that job. It was just too hard and emotional for me to see her and be in that situation. I still think about her and pray she is okay. Uh, it makes me sick to even tell this story right now, but thank you for shedding light on this very real issue. Crazy. Yeah. It's very dark. Sad. And th that's like the thing. It's ev everybody thinks there's a certain, for, for every kid, right? There's a certain percentage of nature versus nurture. And then this story and other stories like that, that smiling girl saying, I love you, mommy. It shows me that there's a certain set amount of nature that no nurture can overcome, Right. This kid wants a mommy. She wants to play with her doll like she's the mommy. She knows what the word is. Like as soon as it, as soon as she can speak and like has a deep burning desire for one, and uh, it's gonna leave them with some sort of hole later in life, right? So yeah, and he there's has two twink dads, but they yell. But they, you know, you watch Drag Race and they do your hair. They'll do makeup. It's like Modern Family. Yeah, it's the worst thing you could do. And and honestly, we've talked about this before. Modern Family fucking accelerated this shit. It did because yeah. it made every, the gay guys fun characters who were funny and witty, and they all hang out and have brunch and they raise this kid who's now sophisticated at a young age. But they didn't show the part where the little Asian girl goes, "Where, well, where's my family? Why don't I look like you? Who's my dad? Who's my mom? Yeah, the gay writers, they don't write that line. <laughs> they don't write, where's mommy? I love mommy. I want to have a mommy. So they just give the smartest, wittiest lines to the gay guys so that you think they're the smartest and wittiest and not just horny and Planet Fitness. It's so true. It's called subversion. It is called subversion. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, you got to be is. aware of the subversion. You really do. All right, moving on. Our last piece of cringe of the week. There was a very funny tweet that Richard Rapoy found about people, a student at Baylor. Yeah, everybody found this. It wasn't just me, but uh, this professor goes, today in my Harry Potter class at Baylor, we had a hard and necessary conversation about J.K. Rowling and her hatred of trans people. We decided novelist Rowling, who wrote with compassion about diversity, equity, and inclusion, is worth our attention. Twitter Rowling, shame on her. Baylor. Baylor. That's bunch, a private school. Bunch of kids paying 50 grand to hear some <laughs> twink. I don't even know if he's a twink. Some loser professor in his Harry Potter class talk about if we can like J.K. Rowling because she's mean on Twitter. So I just wanted to point that out. We have uh, a trans person teaching a Taylor Swift lyrics class at Harvard. We have this guy teaching the Harry Potter class at Baylor. And I'm sure there are thousands of more equally stupid classes across the country that you take for an easy A that are just waiting, that has some like emotional professor who's going to shoehorn his personal opinions in. So I just wanted to read that and cringe. We don't really have much to say about and it. And then but. Ben Shapiro can chime in and go, Baylor's so stupid. <laughs> they, they don't even realize they're, they're subverting an entire generation of students. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. It's all part of the plan, Ben. Yep. Waste these kids' time, get them into debt, make them little emotional debt slaves, and at least they'll know about Harry Potter and the Taylor Swift lyrics. Yeah, at least they'll hate their heritage and be anti-American and be more likely to be okay with mass migration and the destruction of the country they grew up in Taylor's so stupid yeah all right moving on we are out of cringe and into urban decay our first clip of urban decay a chipotle shooting or as some say chipotle 
Nobody does that. Only only people who want to purposely piss you off say Chipotle still. Mm, I knew a guy. I um, knew a guy too, but they, then once they've been corrected, nobody's ever corrected them. Then they start getting, they just do it to piss you off. We'll see. All right. So <laughs> let's let the clip play. Uh, is it a long clip? No, this is 15, 17 seconds. Okay. All right. So the dispute was over guacamole. Which is $2.65 at Chipotle. And I was going to say that is maybe the lowest dollar amount um, that anyone's ever been shot over. Yeah, we I think we had a nine dollar one at one point that we covered on the show. We had shot over cold fries. That's true. So that's like three bucks. That's less than two two sixty five bucks. So it's in the same range. We've seen this only once before. Maybe call it a tie. Um, And then there was a an interview done with uh, the kid who was there. Check this out. It was loud. And then we all just ran out because it was. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't expect to. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about there was going to be a shot, but there was. Hmm. <laughs> Tell me you're not a show watcher without telling me you're not a show watcher. And I'm almost positive we couldn't hear it on the audio, but I'm sure it was no guacamole, no guacamole. Yes. But there's a <laughs> yeah. repeating word. Exactly. He kept saying, say it to my face, say it to my face, say it to my face. And then he said, I'm going to go to my car and get something. And he came back. And next thing you know, there was a shootout. Yeah. <laughs> he could never have seen it coming. Oh, man. This makes me think, this kid, mm-hmm. he went to Chipotle on his lunch break. Yeah. yeah. Or you know? he's a high school student or something. Or he's yeah. a high school student, or he walked from the school during lunch to get Chipotle or after school. John Doyle said this was near uh, two affluent Detroit area high schools, and he's been there several times. So. so you go after school or during your lunch break, you walk to Chipotle, and then there's a shooting. This kid is owed reparations. I think so. That's fair. You go on your lunch break and someone shoots somebody over $2 guacamole. I think you're owed 10 k for that. <laughs> I don't know where that ever comes from or who's going to pay for it. You know? But, you know, it neutralizes some demands for reparations is what I would say. I think he's owed reparations. And then the same people, the people who want reparations will say this kid owes reparations because he has the same color skin as someone 200 years ago who he's not related to who owned slaves. But then this kid goes to lunch yeah, and someone's shooting over nothing. Yeah. I think he's a reparations before anyone else. So, yeah. you know, and I, when I moved to L.A., when I first moved to L.A., mm-hmm. I had my car stolen. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So and you I need like reparations. days of work. I need reparations, too. Do you know who stole it? Did you get the race? No, I didn't get the race. But, but you could I, guess? I know where they found the car after, and I know the race of everyone in that neighborhood. Crenshaw? <laughs> Some sort of <laughs> shit like that? So it makes you kind of think, who's getting reparations? Also, we're going to move on. Uh, I want to really quick, for some reason, I can't spell guac. Interesting. Every time I try to spell guac, I write quack, Q-U-A-C-K. Wow. You can't read either, so this actually shouldn't surprise anyone. Yeah. So I can't write guac. I keep writing quack. And then I also, unrelated to that, the number four and capital R, I, I switch them up all the time. That's mild dyslexia. Thank you for admitting that on something, show. Something, something. It's something. Yep. Four and R is a mess. Guac is quack. I write a Q every time I start to write guac. Disappointing. All right. Let's move on. Uh, everyone on the show and everyone who watches the show knows that stereotyping is natural. Mm-hmm. And it's good. And it can get you out of a lot of trouble. It can get you out of a tough situation if you're not sure if you should cross the street or maybe get out of a Wendy's before something pops off. You can ballpark the relative danger of a situation just off stereotypes alone. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately for progressives, uh, because of their agenda and the world that they are required to live in. The PSYOP that's happened to them, too. It's not just, mm-hmm. it's not that's like true. they chose it. It's like who the PSYOP worked on, right? Yeah. So they're required, um, because of their PSYOP, to live in the opposite of reality. Mm-hmm. So there was a couple of questions asked to progressives about just race in general. And here's what the results were. First, 50% of progressives think that people of color have no hope of succeeding because of racism. Wow. Which is pretty interesting. Um, And then, you know, that's the progressive idea. And it gets higher with Gen Z. Boomers, they don't believe it. Holding strong. Thank you, boomers. Thank you, boomers. Um, And then, (laughs) so, 
they think that because of a person's race, they have no chance of succeeding. But mm-hmm. then we also found the- Which kind of is racism, right? Like you, you think it's because of the system, but then you're just kind of saying like, oh, he can't do it because he's <laughs> of his race. Yeah, yeah. You're it's a person like, of color. It's like, you're not going to make it. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you been out there? It's so racist, right? Yeah. It's like, wait, you just told me I can't make it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, obviously, with that, uh, there are other factors. I found a graph that shows how much homework time people spend based on race. Uh, and you can see that uh, here we have it, white, black, Hispanic, Asian. Asians are spending the most time on the homework. Asians are blowing everyone out. And white people are right there with Hispanic. White and Hispanic are pretty close. And then black people, they, do, they don't do the reading, I guess. They just take their papers at the end of the day and shove them in their backpack. That's that's something you would do with that too. <laughs> that's something I kind of did. I kind of did that too. And then there was a low income. But at least income... I did it. I did it. Yeah. The papers got the shoveled in the backpack. You know. Yeah, it's a good, exactly. And then we have the low income versus not low income. Yeah. So there's the graph. There's yeah. your if you wanted to like break it down to your idea of who's going to be successful and who's not. It's people who are going to do their homework and put time into school. Yeah, and you can't be dumb naturally based on genetics and then also not do the homework. Then you're you're a street sweeper, or, you know something. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't even know why I said that, but like you're you're a ditch digger. You're done. Yeah. You can't do anything. You, you can't rely on your brain for work. Street sweepers probably have to drive like a three hundred thousand dollar thing. Like that's probably pretty high stakes. Not everyone can become that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously, this stat is ignored mm-hmm. um, because progressives think it's white people's fault that black people don't do their homework. Yeah. And then another data set was done uh, where progressives think that black people, on average, are smarter than white people. Yeah, it says white ribble, white liberals refusing to believe the science on race differences and in intelligence. As a group, they rate blacks as more intelligent than whites. There's literally no scientific evidence to support this belief. The mean cognitive advantage of U.S. whites over blacks has been firmly established and is officially accepted by the American Psychological Association. That's from uh, Monitoring Bias on Twitter, who is a prolific poster on this subject. So, yeah, white liberals. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, well, I think it's because George Floyd oh, yeah, 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 OD'd yeah, yeah. while being arrested and resisted arrest and then died because of that guilt that white people have. They need to forfeit ground and say black people are smarter, black people are better than white people, uh, black people have to deal with racism, and it's hard to succeed. And it That's gets- a good point because this didn't actually happen. That didn't cross over until after 2020. So you know how to read a chart a little bit. Can't spell guac, quack, but I, I just guessed that that was what it was. Yeah. Because I, I vibed it. My vibes are on point. Yeah. And then here's where it gets the, you know, the the most telling. Backwards and upside down, Backwards perhaps. Backwards and upside down. White liberals think that white people are more violent than black people on average. Which, how how'd, could, you, how'd you get that? How'd you get that? Because you can't even get it from videos. You can't even get it from uh, statistics. You can't get it anywhere. But yeah, here's the chart. Black violence stereotype rating. One peaceful. Seven equals violent. Uh, white liberal is, yeah, whites are more. It's negative. Yeah, which is insane because basically- or, and, and this is also 2020. This is also 1992, 2016, 2020. So something changed. Something happened. It was the George Floyd experience. Imagine being like a white progressive who just goes, and, and th- this kind of shows you like how much people- This is the white progressive version of lying and just going through the HR sensitivity training. It's the version. They're just like, okay, I'll write they're they're a little less violent than whites. I'll just write yeah. that. Yeah. You know? They're and then smarter, they're less violent. They're smarter, they're less violent, and then I'll just get I'll feel good about myself afterwards, and that's it. It's twenty twenty now. Okay, right? good boy score. Yeah. And then the year after this stat was done, twenty twenty one, blacks were sixteen times more murderous than whites. Here's that table, the FBI numbers in uh twenty twenty one. Which is interesting because sixteen people, times. Sixteen times. That's a lot. You can if you can 16x your money, that's a lot. But it's like people would if you say this, they'll go, "Oh, you're being racist." But how come when I mention murderous whites, I don't go, "Well, no, nah, I'm not a murderer. I wouldn't murder anybody. I'm not a white all guy. whites. Yeah. Not all whites are murderers. Why you you know? I don't I don't I don't relate to or criminals. stand for criminals. Yeah. So I'm not a criminal. I'm not part of the criminal stats. If white criminals are doing stuff. I don't, I don't relate. That's not me. I'm not a white criminal, too. Yep. Um, so it's pretty interesting. And also the uh, the stats, 13% of the population does 50% of the murders. Yeah. It's actually closer to 60% now. I know. So we have to update that meme. And it's less than 13% because it's mostly the violent men. Mm-hmm. So it's That's actually 6%. 
Um, and then, you know, as we've been showing with some of these charts, how the, the shift has happened in 2020, it shows how effective a PSYOP can be on people and uh, particularly weak-minded progressives who just are doing their homework and they want to get the good boy points. But here's the media usage of social justice slash woke terminology since 2014. It's increased 700%. Yeah. Words like white privilege, systemic racism, diversity and inclusion, unconscious bias, whiteness, intersectionality, police brutality, all that. So there's the PSYOP right there. Yeah, that's it. And I think that it worked. Yeah. I guess that's the point we want to reiterate. And so if you're watching the show, you're one of the survivors. You're a reality enjoyer, as we call it. <laughs> And, you know, it feels good, right? Like, you, if you didn't get vaccinated, you don't believe in any of this shit, like you're just living like a normal guy in 1996, it feels pretty good. You're pretty impervious. Until they round us up for the camps. True. That's going to be bad when that happens. But, you know, do commercials even work on you? You know, does advertising even work? You might be a level five impervious. Impervious? Yeah. You're not you pretty can, good. Yeah, you can't even be persuaded. Um, last thing about this section, I'm going to say, I think progressive white people hate themselves and white people uh, because they forget that someone in their bloodline went through struggle uh, and had like the immigrant experience. Like my grandparents and great grandparents came to America from other countries. They ate shit for a while. They had no money. They worked in tenements. They lived... Uh, on top of each other. Had to join the military, shit like that. Tenement you know? housing, had to join the military. And then my parents had it slightly better. And then I have it better than my parents had it, who had it better than their parents had it. And it works your way down. And if you get to the point where you have it pretty good because someone in your family struggled generations back, the progressives forget that. They see people struggling now mm -hmm. and they go, oh, you shouldn't have to struggle. I don't struggle like this. You shouldn't have to either. Here, take my spot on the boat. Yeah. And it's really it's like well, that person struggling is doing something for their bloodline that will be uh, the, the rewards will be reaped in two generations. And then if you want to take that inverse too, like how your grandparents struggled and came and worked hard and whatever, it's like how many generations have there been of black Americans since like the civil rights or anything like that? And then like if you're still if you just got born and you're still kind of living in poverty and stuff, then like. The last two generations, nobody did the right thing and kind of moved up, yeah. right? Talk to your parents about that. I don't know Talk who- Talk to your grandparents about that. Nobody ate shit and took two jobs, you know? Because uh, someone in my lineage did, someone in yours did. Yeah. So, But the progressives, they see people struggling now and go, oh, they're struggling worse than me. I need to change that. That's my, my role. And they just feel guilty for having an easier life, but- they only have an easier life because someone in their bloodline had a hard life. Yeah. And people were at different points. So if you see a person having a hard life, their kids will have an easier life and their kids' kids will have an easier life if they work hard and do the right thing. Progressives don't get that. They don't get that we were all on the struggle bus at some point. And you can also do that to within one generation where you live in squalor and you're like a janitor living in Section 8 housing. But if you come home and you hammer your kid on reading and doing this math and getting good grades and getting into a college, you can break it yourself just by mm -hmm. being a teacher, right? Exactly. All right, let's go to our last uh, couple clips of Urban. The girl stay next to the street rat on the subway. Yeah, this is an update from last week, basically. Mm -hmm. So I'm the girl next to him in that video. It's funny because in the comments, so many people are guessing what I'm thinking and feeling in that moment based on their own biases. Like, there are some people saying, oh my god, that girl looks so afraid, why is nobody helping her, where are the men to come save her? And then there are some people giving out to the creator for being scared, being like, that girl beside him isn't bothered, she sees this every day. And I know this is really topical because there's like the subway puncher and things like this, but I think what's really important to do in that moment is literally just keep your wits about you. I had my headphones off, I wasn't reading my book, I'm just looking straight down. What was really telling about the comments in that video though was that nobody had empathy for the guy who was obviously experiencing some sort of mental health episode. In case things do get violent, you can only protect yourself, but where is the empathy for somebody who has no support? Why is he having that episode on the subway? Why doesn't he have somewhere to go? This is, has blown my mind about living in New York. People- He's a street rat, ma'am. Who's gonna, who will think of the subway sucker punchers, the knockout game players? Who's yeah. gonna have empathy for them? Yeah, it's like he's a street rat and he's about to hit you. They're Call your dad. Yeah, he'll the, tell you get off the subway. As go to the next car. Yeah, she <laughs> she thinks like, oh, I can handle this. I've seen this every day. Yeah, I have an email job. <laughs> I'm a boss babe in New York City, and I have no money because all my money goes to rent, and I have an email job. 
My favorite is the people's biases are getting in the way and they try to apply a motive or a, apply a thought process to me, the girl sitting there. And it's like, we don't need to apply anything. We see a mentally disturbed, violent individual and we see how close he's getting to sucker punching people. Yeah. And we don't need your opinion on how dangerous that is. We can all assess it ourselves, right? Exactly. But she has empathy. So she's on the side of the guy doing the sucker punching. And it's like, okay, so in this situation, there's... 50 people who are innocent trying to go to work who are dealing with like a, a violent one person. Yeah. And you're on, the, you're thinking of the one person. Someone has to. Someone has to think of the one street rat who might knock someone out, right? And that's, you know, she's actually, statistically, she's probably more violent than him. <laughs> <laughs> and white progressives be yeah. like. Yeah. Um, and then here's a headline that came out from Salon since the NYC sucker punching is so topical and you saw all the white girls. And the black guy who was doing it, the uh, failed political candidate, as they called it, Salon had a headline that said, men punching random women in NYC, a desperate last gasp of the male rage fueling MAGA. So they blame it on MAGA? These journalists will do fucking anything, guys. Yeah. So if you live in New York City and that's the take. This is MAGA country. <laughs> white girl. <laughs> boom. Everybody knows MAGA people just knock out white girls. Yeah. And they get let out from jail really easily. <laughs> no bail. Um, and MAGA then, people are famous for getting yeah. no bail. And then uh, we have, you know, while we're talking about New York City, there's a subway fight that happened the other day. Here's that playing in the background. All these kids. All these kids after school, backpacks, they're all fighting. Yeah, That's classic. the subway. Um, and then uh, here is New York City Mayor Adams talking about the subway. And New York is are safe on our subway system. I'm down there talking to the passengers, communicating with them. And many of them keep saying over and over again as we move through the subway system, they say to me, Eric, can people stop saying we're unsafe down here? It's the best subway system on the globe and we're the safest on the globe. Ah, uh, safest on the globe? <laughs> everyone keeps telling Eric Adams, hey, man, why is everyone saying the subway is so dangerous? It's the safest. Yeah, that's pull the cops going, off. <laughs> that's what's going on. Who had any idea? Yeah. Well, Some random place in Japan, any random city in Japan is just 10x. Russian subway system. Crazy. But yeah, that's the delusion. The, that's I guess that's the delusion right there. There's If there's no problem, he can't admit it. This is like a white progressive taking the test. Yeah. <laughs> safest in the globe, even better than everywhere. Japan. Yeah. <laughs> And you had a week of people just getting sucker punched <laughs> by strangers over nothing. I'm, they say this, and then you're watching a video of someone swinging. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. We're moving on to uplifting gold. We have some uplifting stuff. Yeah. That makes uh, life worth living and uh, makes you not get blackpilled. Baseball, apple pie. A dog. The Olympics. You know, there's a lot of good stuff out there still. Yep. So our first uplifting gold story is a judge in New York threw out a squatter case. You know, everyone is siding with the squatter. Squatter's <laughs> taking houses over. Judge tosses NYC squatter's lawsuit claiming rights to $930,000 Queens home after they tried using Shake Shack receipt to prove the home was theirs. And that had to go to a court? Yeah, they had to go all the way to the court. So the police goes, okay, your court that's your Shake Shack receipt? All right, your court date's May 9th. Here you go. I'll see you there. So you have six more weeks in the house, and yeah. then you get to court, and then the judge goes, this is a Shake Shack receipt. This doesn't work. Why is this uplifting gold, you may ask? Because at least the judge didn't give away someone's million-dollar house for a Shake Shack receipt. That's why it's uplifting. That's the thin, thin. We were this close. <laughs> <laughs> we were this close to losing it all. On a I Shake Shack. Yeah. I wonder how much the receipt was for. $19 maybe? And it was probably like a Shake Shack delivery to the house. Exactly. Like I got Uber Eats here like two months ago. <laughs> Come on. my house. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the old lady eating with the hat. Here she is. Must be 100 years old. Backwards hat. She's like a kid. Like yeah. a Benjamin Button. <laughs> yeah. That's uplifting. Yeah, she made it that far. She probably worked hard. She ate shit at some point in her life so that her family could feed her now. And there now you go. Now she's just munching. Now she's munching, baby. That's probably like. taste buds. Old people's taste buds, they're gone. They eat way too hot a soup. They don't care. So they she's just munching. Notice. That's good, though. She's alive and she's old and yep. she's eating with the hat on. All right. You, I see you put extra effort in today for uplifting gold. The squatter who didn't get the house for their seat and the old lady just existing. This is why we do it. This All is right. what's living. This is what lives for. This is why we stay alive. Okay. I mean. <laughs> All right. Rats while sleeping. Uh, another 
another half uplifting gold. So this lady's sleeping, and then the rats are crawling on her in a nightmare way that you would hope never happens to you. And maybe you'd think, oh, there's rats on the walls. What if they got out and touched me while I was sleeping? That's what it looks like. Okay, so what is the uplifting gold? That this isn't happening to us, but is happening to her? What's, yeah, okay. exactly. Nice. Uplifting because 97% of us don't have rats like that. Don't have rats like that. Yeah, it's like a penguin quote. Could be worse. Your nose could be gushing blood. So <laughs> yeah. you might as well be thankful that you don't have rats. You ever have crawling. rats or mice in your house? Uh, the old house that we had. Remember when we were sniping them with the BB guns yeah. and trapping them? That, that was my only rat experience. What do we used to call that? We had a word like, let's go do a drive-by or something. Oh, yeah. It was like uh, ride-through. or It was some sort of, yeah. Drive-by. Ambush, like where we'd come in, open it late at night, and then go pop, pop, pop. Because we had, air, had an air gun, right? Yeah. And then uh, the rats would come down through the rafter uh, where the garage goes up and down on the yeah. powered garage. Mm -hmm. So they would go down, across the rafter, and then down. So if, you, if they were in the garage late at night, and you open the door, they would have to run back to their hole, and they would run up the garage, along the rafter, into the hole. So you could ambush and come out and know the path that they were going to take, so you could just aim there. Like duck hunt status. Yeah. They would come across. And then I would shoot like a, like an Urban Decay individual, where I'd come out and just go, bang, 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 bang. Yeah. And that was more fun. I could have gone like this and did like, you know, aiming, and I just came out blasting. And let that thing talk. And yeah. just go shooting like from the side. Like, like the rat forgot your guacamole. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like the rat forgot your guacamole. And we'd get them. And then one time I lived in LA and I heard rats in the walls and then I set up traps mm -hmm. and then I heard the same sounds and I turned the lights on and the rats were in the room. Oh, So I'm like, oh, they're in the walls. This is scary. The nope. sound wasn't in the walls. They were in the room with me. That's dark. And then I had to put my bed in the middle of the floor and I took peppermint oil and put it around the whole bed. So you have rat experience. Yeah, you have I a have lot. rat experience. That's disgusting. It's not good. And then they die in the wall, and then they smell bad. And then uh, one time the exterminator came, and he goes, well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is the, the, the rat's dead, and the smell's gone. The bad news is the smell's gone because the other rats ate the dead rat. <laughs> <laughs> Uplifting gold, everybody. Woo, that's why we do it. All right, fishing lure. We got to go fast now. We ran out of time. All right. This is cool. I don't know if this is even real. Fishing lure, he's on the app, and he changes it. It's like a telephoto. That's sick. Yeah. I would snag that on a tree in my back cast and be out 80 bucks or $80 whatever. $80 lure, gone. Gone. One cast. Um. All right. Let's go to the dogs jumping rope. Then we'll just play this fast. This is stupid. I don't even know why you put this in here. But at least they all know. Yeah, they know. That's Jump fun. The rope. They like this. There you go. And that guy's got a nice relationship with all those dogs. Oh, I didn't see this far. All right. That's enough. And then last clip uplifting is this nice Catholic woman defending the I believe St. Michael statue yep. in Brazil. Yeah, I think so. Protecting it. Lone Catholic woman protects the statue in Mexico from leftist vandalism. Isn't that nice? And usually St. Michael, we ask St. Michael to protect us. Mm -hmm. So she can return the favor. Yep, she protects St. Michael. Well, that's it. That is the end of the episode. Another Fleckus Talks in the Books. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. FleckusMerch.com for the best merch in the game. Get your Trump Eclipse shirt today. And then, last but not least, maybe most importantly, join us in Bonusland. 30-minute Bonusland episode dropping right now. Some good stuff from Cringe that we ran out of time for that'll be in Bonusland, I believe. And, yep. Uh, FleckusTalks.com is the website. And Ratboy got a phone call today you. that might be a call to action. So what we'll, we'll discuss in bonus land, I guess. Cliffhanger, join us in bonus land. Crazy. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on Friday. Yeah, it goes right through. No problem.